Hello people and welcome to Ember Vale. This is in Shrouded. And we have just awoken as a new being made by ancients and humans in Unity. And our task is now to release Ember Vale from the grip of the Shroud. Now my thoughts with these little videos are gonna be uh, that I'm gonna make them episodic. I'm not going to go too far into the whole lore aspect of it. If you really want to read these, uh, please feel free to pause the video and do so. Uh, I'm just going to open the books as I come across them because they will offer new points of interest and new quests. So don't just pass them by if you're playing this game. Be sure to read every little thing you come across. Um, and of course, yeah, I played the beta, which means I have a little bit of... Uh, knowledge at, um, at hand and know where to go and, uh, and all that and uh, yeah but let's just get to it the first episode here will be me working my way down towards the area where we're gonna place the initial flame altar and thus our base so yeah uh, I am gonna rush it a little bit actually <clears throat> because I know that this cave is relatively safe. There are only a few enemies that are designed to kind of introduce you to the system, the combat system. Be sure to get in here, for example, and get the uh, hidden chests. Oh, semi-hidden. Wasn't really hidden, was it? And also, spend a torch or two getting materials, because then you can make weapons that are better than the ones, or at least better than the torch. Just trying to see. Sometimes the, the mats fall into the wall, so they kind of don't get access and just keep, just keep farming. Okay, maybe try these over here actually. And I know that I'm gonna get a new torch down the road, so I'm not too worried about breaking this one. Uh, let's see. Seven, that's enough to make a club. <clears throat> now, I don't want to go too far into the whole inventory system yet because it will become self-evident and if there's anything, I'll make sure to mention it along the way. But now we're just moving ahead. Skeletons lying on the ground, you know, try to hit them or hit the air above them. And then you can farm the bones. These you don't need to attack, it's just, you know, practice, so we can head straight to this guy. Because they are fairly easy to kill, these first three. Oh, we actually got a free sword there, that's a nice start. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, let's take it anyway, so. As you can see, uh, the club is a blunt weapon. And the sword is a cutting weapon. A little bit of piercing. Um, what this means is some enemies are um, sensitive to blunt damage and some are sensitive to cutting, poison, piercing, fire and so on. So it all depends on what kind of enemy you're facing. But you'll learn that as you play along. So but now we can just view that sword as a free weapon so we don't have to do that. So making a new club because this one just breaks. And yeah, to be fair, uh, weapons don't, you don't have to make weapons all the time. Once you get set up, uh, you will get a workbench down on your base, and every time you visit the workbench, uh, your weapons be will be repaired automatically. So that's quite nice. You don't have to worry about that, so it's just in the beginning. We don't have the bench yet. Just gonna farm a few twigs here. And that's because I want to make myself a wand which is our first range weapon. So yeah, some enemies make sense to kind of go a little bit distance on them instead. Oh, we got our first level up. And with this, we also, ah, thought I could take that. We also got a skill point. And you know, just like any skill tree in any other crafting survival game, 
you have to choose a direction. As you can see, there are quite a few. The blue ones are mostly casters. Um, these are more the, uh, yeah. I think the titles are self-explanatory. These are very uh, hands-on, close combat. These are ranged. Uh, but of course, since we're going to build a little bit, I think it makes sense to kind of get the skill that makes you collect more resources in the beginning. So we're going to take that. And then we're going to move on. Oops. Just want to get these bones. Free string. Yeah, and, uh, oops. Don't want to sleep. Every time you see a little kind of a flask or pot or box or barrel just crush them because often more often than not they will have items inside that are useful even in the beginning and even later on it feels like it kind of scales a little bit with the areas you're in so, yeah think of them as a quick way to get some mats you will otherwise have to craft yourself Again, read lore until this pop-up appears. And we're still gone. Oops. Ah, so, there we go. So, now my clock broke. I'm gonna switch the sword. Oh, got it all. Let's <laughs> have some bones we can take. See if there's anything here. That's actually a oh, that's a bit of wet. And another one. And this actually leads upstairs. There's some stuff up here we might want to get, actually. I do suggest you spend just a little bit of time instead of rushing down to the base area, just clear this out. Because on top here there are actually a little bit of lore as well. And this one gave us a new location, so it's not just lore, it's a few UIs and quests. Okay, jumping down. Buckets. Can be a little bit tricky. Nothing in them. And then something to note from the start is try to notice these little kind of indications of hidden passages or uh, like, you know, rooms like this. There will be several of them along the way. And they could contain some interesting weapons or armor, so no reason not to come up there. There is another spot down here that we will get to in a moment, which I think might be a hidden passage, but I haven't uh, done anything to kind of confirm that yet. Maybe we can do that later on. Just gonna make a new club. Oh, let's make a bow. Let's make a shield. We can also make an axe, but it, yeah, okay. Maybe we should actually make an axe. We can make a string, so because axes, are actually far better at destroying items here in the beginning or in general. You know, buckets and barrels because they destroy so fast, so it makes it easier to farm. Let's just go around here and see. Oh, that's where we came from. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm gonna go here. Kinda you have to aim a little bit. The only problem with the axe, it, it can often it can't destroy items on the ground. So you have to switch to the club instead. Small items. Like these.
Which is kind of silly, actually. There we go. Mm. So here's the first bit of shroud outside, and a little bit of lore, and then we have an enemy. Let's try and use the axe see what goes. So he, he doesn't have a shield, he doesn't have a, a long spear, so he's okay to attack with a slow axe, but if you miss these swings, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but they cost stamina. So at some point you will get tired from using this axe, and have to take a break. And, uh, Put you in a oh, dangerous position like with this guy. See, every time I uh, hit, I have to move closer if he gets knocked back. Which, which puts him in a better position to use his weapon if he's got a fast weapon. Reload. And that usually means that there's a cave also, like this, a tomb, where we can find stuff. These rings that come from destroying these rooms, actually if they will affect the timer so it goes faster, so try to stay clear, they will subside pretty fast. Yeah, because we can't stay in the shroud for more than five minutes. And you want sometimes you want to have every little bit of second you can get, so lock chests and just make a lock pick. We've got healing potions, which are nice. A little bit of metal here. Metal scraps are good because you're gonna use them pretty early on, and they can be a bit of a pain to farm in the beginning. So anything you can get at that is nice. I think I cleared this one. Oops, did we forget something there? <clears throat> And yeah, here's the hidden thing. So I discovered this in another place at a higher level. Uh, it kind of seems like there's a stair going down. And this requires a pickaxe. So you know what? If I can make the pickaxe, let's try it now. We need four twigs. We can get those relatively fast, I think. Let's see. There should be some bushes around here. Because then we can get a confirmation on that. Twix, 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 give us twigs, please. More twigs. Oh, three wood here. Another chest. Let's see how many twigs we got. Yeah, we can make it now. And this is useful for a lot of things. Actually, I would be sure to bring this on every mission you go to because you will also encounter chests that have been dug down into the ground and you can't get to those unless you have an, a big egg. So let's try and see what is down below here. This also requires stamina unfortunately. So let's make a recharge. Maybe we can eat some food and drink some water actually. And do we have meat? Yeah but it's not been prepared. Don't eat raw meat. You will get a debuff. Go. I'm almost sure there's something down here because it just seems illogical to have a locked door or a closed door into a, an empty room. <laughs> It will take some time, as you, as you can see, the structure kind of goes down. So maybe there's a hidden area down here. And who knows what might be in here. It could be a chest with some 
decent items for a start. This just looks like a door frame, doesn't it? But it does seem as we're hitting some floor now. Hmm. Maybe it is just decoration. It just seems weird they would do this. And maybe it was their intention to do something here, but then they kinda decided not to. Also makes me think maybe this is something that we saved for a time when she's got more stamina so we don't get tired so fast. But so far it doesn't seem like there's anything useful here except rubble. But rubble can also be used to make um, different terrain types later on so it's not completely wasted. This looks like it would be a door here or something. What's this? Still nothing, just decoration. Seems... Seems silly. Ah, I'm just saying that because I spent this time doing it. <laughs> uh. Well? It does seem like there's nothing here. A bit of a disappointment, but lesson learned. Not everything that looks interesting is. I don't think we can go through this floor. Seems like bed, kind of bedrock. Oh, what? Is it being crushed? This looks like it's being crushed a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, do a few more hits and see what happens. Ah. Oh well. Well, we're not. <clears throat> okay, then we have food. A little bit lower here first. Small long weapons here. Oh, animal fur. Want to get that. Got some free meat, some mushrooms. There we go. Okay, gonna eat one of those mushrooms, make some water. And then we're gonna place the meat in the uh, toolbar. Sit down. And then select the meat and hold left mouse button to cook until it makes a sizzling sound. And let's just make it on three. Because these will give you a nice 20 minute buff, so. Excellent. Okay. Uh, also. We have this water well. Wish we can get some extra water bottles. And then we have a little bit of a tomb here. More like a little small hidden area. Let's get this guy. He has a chest. And it is not amazing, but useful nonetheless. <laughs> the reason I'm getting this is basically just to save myself time. Having to farm the mats to make some of the items that we found. 
Uh, we're pretty much at the uh, place where we're gonna set up base camp. Okay. Just wanna get this because there's a lot of stuff here. It's very useful. Uh, again, we need the smaller weapon. And you know what, before we go into the base, we are gonna grab this shroud area here as well, because there is another tomb. Oh, gotta make a new club right away, right? Because it will break any minute now. In fact, let's just destroy this one. Oh, maybe we should make a shield as well. Did I have it enough for that? Yes. Because that will enable you to block. So the way that works is just... Oh, I already had one. But you right click and... Equip. Let's delete this. And then you can block. And parry. Oh, shield bash. Sorry. I hold the right on this one. Again, another tomb because it's a shroud area. Now the two people. Oh, he's a spear guy, so he has a little bit more range. So he's a bit easier to kill. Chest. More bandages. Oh, oh well. Oh, if you notice, there were books on this shelf, and those kind of get destroyed, and then you kind of grab the pages. And I know for sure they can they can be used for decorations, uh, but I haven't found yet any kind of recipes that makes anything potions or stuff but maybe that will come along the way because we will get an alchemist as one of the npcs and uh, yeah i think he'll probably be the most likely guy to use book pages um yeah we'll find out so that was this tomb i think yeah cleared let's get out we'll have two and a half minutes so it's fine and uh, basically, there's a little bit of area here, but there's... Oops, what was that? Oh, it's just a bush. Nothing in it. Other than twigs. Oh, that's that area. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, you almost got a hit in on me there. Just gonna grab a few bushes here and this card, actually. Just for the mats and these as well. So as you can see, we have roamers, and these will go around um, at night, also sometimes during day. Uh, and the thing you have to know is that you can't just leave your character, for example, here, because at some point he's going to roam towards you and he's going to kill you while you're out making food or toilet or whatever. So yeah. Kill them first, and then they won't respawn until next night. Um, okay, but now, this is our future home. We're gonna make a flame altar. We're also gonna make a construction hammer, and we're gonna make a workbench. But the flame altar is the initial 
most important thing. So this this frame signifies the area in which you can build for now. You are able to make more flame altars, um, but you're also able to upgrade and strengthen this specific altar here. So you can kind of choose, I mean, the game dictates that you have to place your base here now, uh, because that's, that's just the way it is. So I'm going to put it here-ish, because I think at some point I can make an entrance over in the top corner there. And now we can commune with the flame. And uh, yeah, this is basically us having a base now. And the first message is about, uh, you should go out and find more survivors, so you can start building a community and strengthen and uh, you know save the world. And the option that we have now is we can upgrade and we can strengthen. And these require different kinds of materials. Some of them you won't get uh, until you ventured further into the uh, into Ember Vale and the Shroud. And this you only get uh, from killing bosses. Um, at Flame All... Oh no, what's it called? Let's see. It's called a specific thing. It's called Wells. Uh, it's not on the map yet, obviously. But anyways. So the uh, option now, the uh, obje objective now is just to make the initial pieces for the base. Uh, we have the white bench, and I would really love to place it on a foundation, but since we can't make foundations without the workbench, this will have to do. Thankfully, we can hold down E and pick it up again and move it, so without cost, it will just become, uh, it will just get into our backpack or action bar again. But we're gonna make blocks. So basically, you would think, okay, one block. Of these will make a foundation. Well, that's not the case. Um, different size foundations have different requirements. So, for example, if we're going to take or uh, make a foundation that's the same size as this one, it will require 256. Um, what can we call it? Rough stone blocks. But you get 100 uh, rough stone blocks from two stone. So don't think too much about it. That's just the mechanics. That's just the mathematics about it. So I want to make wood because we have so much of it, and it's you know less expensive. We're gonna use the stone for other things. So I'm just gonna know. I know I'm gonna make a single foundation now, and two fifty six. That means I have to make three. One two three. Now, if you then equip your construction hammer and press tab. That gives you access to every little piece of building material type you have access to. Now we're gonna go for the 4M for this first one. As you can see, you can kind of uh, scoot it up and down. It does have to be attached to the flame altar. And you can also disconnect snapping so you get more freedom. So you basically, you can make floating bases if you want. We're just gonna place this one here. And then we're gonna grab this. Because I really do like having things on foundations. That's just me. <laughs> Put it back down. Well, that was lovely. And uh, let's put it there. Rotate to fit. And I'm going to offset it a little bit because I know I'm going to make chests in a moment. Storage uh, items. So as you can see, no, that's not here. That's inside the bench. This is our next project. Because you really, really need these in the beginning. But, as promised, this first part was only about getting down and setting up base. And getting a few pointers and tips on how to approach the game from the beginning. And episode 2 is already up and running. So head over, grab that. Uh, and uh, that will be about getting the first NPC. But for now, this is the end of this one. So thanks for stopping by. And please do like, follow, subscribe, all that. Would really appreciate it. And uh, otherwise, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.